um, we're getting started slowly. Um, so this presentation is about we're going to build our own Heroku with cloud native stack, which is essentially like cross plane backstage and Argo CD and some bit of like, you know, to get repository, of course. Um, so this is kind of like you know, what we're going, what we're going to go through. The first we're going to talk about like, you know, the Heroku experience and like, you know, what they give you and then architecture of our solution uh, that will do like, you know, that will give you a similar experience. And then we have this hands-on tutorial that we will write code and like, you know, write YAML, see it all in action. And then uh, Grupo Boticario, who uh, is a like, big company, um, they have this set up in their production with lots of like, you know, cross plane resources and different configurations and they will, they're going to uh, do a demo as a, he's going to do the demo as well. Cool. Um, yeah, well, I'm Wafak. Uh, I am an engineer at Upbound and maintainer at Crossplane. I'm the tech lead of the control plane squad that maintains uh, Crossplane and providers. Um, and I'm, I'm Siddhartha, I'm director of infrastructure and cloud at Grupo Boticario. Yep. Cool. Um, so the Heroku experience, right? So Heroku uh, is, you know, even Heroku was there even before Docker uh, came out and like, you know, their concept of like, you know, that is like, you just have a Git repo, you make code changes, Git push and everything is live, right? And on top of that, they've got this like, you know, metrics and activity and like, you know, you just write code, commit and watch it live and what you get from them is like deployment and then scaling and monitoring and some of the security guardrails that they have in place. However, it's, it's not as flexible. Like the more opinionated you get, the more like, you know, the, the less flexible, flexibility you can provide to your users and customers. So a lot of uh, companies, they start with Heroku, but everyone knows like, you know, they're, they're going to outgrow Heroku, right? Um, so what you don't get from Heroku, and one of the, some of the reasons that you would not continue using it is that they don't deploy stuff in your own internal network because like, you know, it's all in, the, in their accounts and like, and they're essentially a hosting service, right? A cloud uh, service to some extent. And they don't allow you to use your own cloud accounts and complex applications developed by multiple teams. For example, if you wanna have like lots of microservices, some uh, like auto scaling with AWS, like advanced scenarios essentially, with, with more than like, you know, a few uh, dyno, uh, dynos they, they call. Um, and also like your own guard rates, right? It's, it's just like um, the opinions of Heroku's design are good, but they don't work for everyone, especially the big companies, right? So what we want to have is a Heroku that you can customize more and you can have like, you know, under, you can feel it under full control. So I'm going to go through like a few tools that we're going to uh, use. The first one is Crossplane, right? So Crossplane is this tool that allows you to build your own internal cloud platform to provision cloud resources, essentially. And you can interact with it through IAC tools like Terraform or Kubernetes applications or CI CD pipeline through GitOps because it's essentially built on Kubernetes API. It gives you, it installs CRDs and you can interact with them with that, uh, just like uh, all other uh, CNCF tools. And Backstage is another CNCF tool that allows you to have a service catalog in your company. And on top of that, they allow you to have a software template concept where you can click and create a new application like Git repo with some of the like, you know, presets and like, you know, CI CD actions if you want to. And then also they have this like, you know, view of, hey, who is owning this service? Uh, where is it located? Is there like, you know, docs for it that I can look up and what's the API? It's essentially like a internal service catalog. And then what we're going to do is to interact with Kubernetes cluster, we're gonna have a cluster, we're gonna deploy all these three tools, uh, all uh, two of the tools and then also Argo CD. And we're going to manage all of that, like you know, our platform consumers who are developers are going to interact with it through backstage. And then our platform builders are going to like, you know, build that cross plane compositions and all the things that, that are like, you know, designing the Heroku experience. We're gonna write our own software templates 
for example, for Node.js or other languages. And in a, in a very high level, this is like a really basic diagram, but I think like, you know, the more we go, like, you know, you're gonna uh, understand the details. Backstage, what, what we, how we are going to do it is like, you know, backstage will have set of software templates. When you request a new service, it's gonna create a Git repo with all the CI CD, and then Argo CD will take over to deploy. And what it deploys is both application and infrastructure, and then cross-plane is going to talk to cloud provider. So with one click, you're gonna get like, you know, for example, uh, RDS instance, like buckets, even cluster if you would like to, uh, together with your application. Um, and yeah, without further ado, we can, we can just start the uh, tutorial. Uh, do go to that page because there are uh, places where the, I will just like copy and paste the YAML because it's just too long so that you can like, you know, keep an open tab and you can just copy and paste the same thing. And also like, you know, later you can, you can follow it. Cool. Um, I think everyone got it. So um, the first thing is that, uh, can you open the repo? Open the repo. So the first thing is essentially we're gonna go through the like Heroku experience, right? We're gonna look at like, you know, how, how it actually works. Uh, in order to do that, let's go to Heroku.com actually and create a new application. Can you put it like here or something or here? Cool, so we just created our own application and I already logged into Heroku. So I'm going to create a folder. Um, just a second. Um, Heroku, keep going. Uh, are you able to see it? No, no okay. <laughs> um. Okay, I found it. Is it better now? It's because of the yellow thing. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't get that right. It's just. Mm. Let me just make this. Is it readable now? Okay, this is. So I'm going to switch to another color light background. Is this better? good now yeah. okay yeah sorry about that it's just night shift is not in, disabled in this external monitor for some reason um, but yeah so let's in it get in it our um, repo and we're going to copy some of the hello world code code that I have here so it's gonna be a um, node.js application Right. Okay. Let's see. Package JSON. This is to have Node.js compile, and we got a very simple server.js. 
Um, but just like, you know, hello world and using the port that Heroku mounts. And then we're just going to git status, git commit. Cool, so I have created my commit. Now I'm going to add Heroku's own remote uh, git repo. Nice. And now I'm going to git push Heroku main. Cool. So um, one experience that we're actually not going to be able to give is this like, you know, git log. Uh, because we're going to use GitHub, it doesn't allow you to edit this remote logging. It just builds right when you do the push and deploys it. Uh, we're going to use GitHub Actions to do, to do that operation. Cool. Um, so if you refresh, open app. Yeah, and now we're seeing the hello world. So whenever we make a change, the same thing happens. Git push and builds it and it deploys it. So that's kind of like, you know, the Heroku experience that I'm uh, going to like you know, try to get to and additionally there is this add-ons concept for example let's see um, okay for example yeah so add-ons is like you know how you add infrastructure to your Heroku application but for example if you want to add a buckets you can use this bucket here and it would like you know make an environment variable available for you like bucket name and credentials to be able to use it we're not going to do that for now um, but yeah now we are going to start to install our tooling to our cluster i'm just gonna copy a bunch of code here and it's going to be a kind cluster We're gonna work on a Heroku namespace uh, and deploy everything important there. Okay, it looks good. Um, so the, the, this cluster is going to host backstage crossplane and also Argo CD. And I've just set the namespace. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a backstage app. So backstage is a little bit different than the other two in that it's actually a bunch of like, you know, libraries that allows you to build your own UI, right? So it's essentially a TypeScript uh, library set. So that's why they have this MPX command that scaffolds the backstage, and then you go and edit those TypeScript files. For example, we're gonna add an action that creates Argo CD application. In order to do that, we're gonna have to like, you know, make some code changes. Um, so let's, create our backstage app actually so it takes a little while so i had i have it already uh, in my local so let's i'm gonna commit a crime and open this in goland um, because your yarn install just uh, takes too long, I have already like you know uh, the scaffolding. So what you see here is the usual TypeScript, like you know uh, it's got like two packages, one app for front end and one for back end, and uh, we're just essentially going to just like run the npm start and uh, see what what the initial state is. Oh, yarn dev, yeah, npm and yarn. Going to have. Yeah. So it's coming up. Oops. Yeah. So this is like you know very initial backstage UI. It's got an example website. It's got create new component. So this part is the catalog part. Is you're supposed to see like you know, all the software that your company has up and running, right? And when you go to this, uh, the, the page, it would show a relations, CI, CD dependencies, documentation. And if you click the source, if it has like, you know, a GitHub repo, it would uh, take you there. And the create part is where we will work uh, most, most of the time at the moment. 
uh, is where you have a template, for example, Node.js template, right? You choose that and it creates a GitHub repo and uh, scaffolds the, everything. So uh, in order to do that, we are going to have to create a GitHub token so that we can uh, have it, we can, we can give it permissions to create it back. Push NA. It needs to have repo and workflow permissions. I'm just going to copy this. Okay, I'm gonna close this because it doesn't have any credentials. So we're gonna put it and then open it again. Cool, so we got that right. And there is, uh, we need to check if it's, so there's this app config. You've got app config local and production, and this is the, like, you know, the core app config. Depending on the environment, these override the main core app config one. For example, when I run Yarn dev, it uses this empty file. I'm going to build an image and deploy to Kubernetes cluster. It's gonna use this production one. So I would like to check integrations, uh, integration of GitHub, whether it has the token, yeah. So it's essentially environment variable. So I'm going to do yarn dev again. Cool. I'm going to go to this create. Yeah, so I'm going to create a service. So what it does is, like in three steps, is the, like you know, the base. You give it a directory for scaffolding. Uh, hey, like you know, these are the like you know starting point for my repo, and it's got some Go templates that it can fill with users' input. Right now, we just give like you know, hey, I am the owner. This is the repo address, but we can extend extend that, and then it publishes to GitHub repository, and then <coughs> it registers it back to. Uh, to this instance. So if we go to that repo that is just initialized for us. Okay, was it private? Hmm. Okay, so this, uh, it added like, you know, a very simple, like some, its own sample and catalog info. This is like, you know, what Backstage uses when you want to import a, a service. So our uh, GitHub token integration is working. This is what we confirmed. So we're going to deploy this to our kind cluster. There's a bunch of uh, options here, but we're just going to use in-memory uh, DB. And on top of the standard, we're gonna add this template option. Normally it doesn't allow you to add templates in the UI. It has to be like, you know, compiled in with your application, but we're just going to enable that and add it through the UI. So I'm going to production, just remove everything, paste this, cool. I don't need to have this open anymore. I'm going to build an image and load it to my kind cluster and deploy it. So it's, this is like, you know, and then I will have a, like a kubectl port forward, just like I'm going to do with Argo CD. Um, and then, yeah, first I need to load the image. And as a next step, we are going to create a secret that has the GitHub token that we uh, created in the earlier step. Let's wait, so we don't have to wait. Okay, token, GitHub token is created. Okay, image is loaded. So we're gonna deploy with a like very simple uh, manifest. It's gonna have like deployment, one replica using our image and a service that exposes it through port 80 and the service account which will be useful uh, later on. So I'm going to copy this manifest Okay, I already 
got it here. Cool. So I am seeing it, it's up and running. And I'm going to open it. So, okay. <laughs> Poor home connection refused. All right. Demo gods don't like us today. Invalid key. Did I? Okay. Okay. Yeah, it in a shell. Oh, the oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. The secret, right? Yeah. Yeah. I just need to stick to the script here. <laughs> okay. Thanks. So I'm just going to delete the part so that it comes back again with the secret. Cool. Come on. Yes, now it's in our cluster. That's cool. Um, so yeah, that's out of the way. And now I'm going to install uh, Argo CD. But the images it uses, the Docker, it, it hits the Docker pull limits. So I'm just going to have a script here that will preload the images so that we don't see that problem. Cool. Um, yeah. And just like, you know, we're going to install it to Heroku namespace. We're going to make it use our uh, preloaded image. Okay, that's, that's okay. The important ones are installed. Cool. Argo CD is there. Let's wait for it to come up. <clears throat> Oh, I preloaded the images. This was supposed to come up fast. Okay. Okay. So it's just like, you know, very uh, frequently used images and in this Wi-Fi, they, they hit the, the code because everyone pulls images right now. Um, yeah, let's kill all of them. They know how to get back up. Cool, so they are getting back. So I'm going to get the initial admin password of Argo CD. If it comes up ever. Okay, you got it. And port forward that one as well. It's in Chrome. Okay, yeah, I am taking the risk. Cool. So admin. Okay, we got our Go CD as well. This is going well. And now we're going to install Crossplane with Helm. And then install provider GCP because like, you know, we're going to uh, provision bucket uh, from GCP in our scaffolded application. Okay, so we got these two. So we're going to start with uh, just like the backstage example uh, scaffolding. We're going to start with a very uh, simple template 
just to validate that we got everything right. So when I installed provider GCP, I also need to give like GCP credentials. So I'm creating a provider config object. Cool, that's created. And it's also need to have the secret. I already have this environment variable available for my service account in GCP. I mean, I hope I do. <laughs> but yeah, cool. So the installation part is done, I think, who I hope. So we're gonna have a like simple hello world template, just like the similar just like, like you know the existing template, but with actual like you know some code in it and like you know, in, from our own template GitHub repo. So this is kind of like you know how backstage uh, you either compile it into your application the template or you create a repo and tell it, hey, like, you know, you can fetch that from there. And whenever you make a change though, you have to refresh it. So I'm going to create a new repo. Mm -hmm. Keep going, templates, and create it. Git clone. So this is going to serve like, uh, for example, in a company, this repo would be maintained by a platform team because they would kind of like, you know, set the uh, compositions, like, you know, what you can do and like, you know, the best practices of languages. In this case, we're gonna go with Node.js. And let's uh, initialize the repo. Cool. So I'm going to talk about a our first template. So a template, a scaf like in order to prepare a scaffolding for backstage, you need to first create a template YAML that will tell it like you know, hey, go and take the, for example, in this case, we've got some properties like that we will ask uh, to users, hey, what is the service name? who is the owner of it. <coughs> and then choose a location. They're gonna like, you know, we're, we're gonna choose a repo. And then there are steps. So these steps are very familiar. Uh, they, like they'll be very familiar to GitHub actions in that like, you know, you, you choose an action and then like, you know, give some input and output and it takes like, you know, one by one. Um, so initially what we are going to do is just like, you know, hey, I have a skeleton folder and these are like, you know, the values that I took, uh, that I got from the user, and these are going to be used in our skeleton template so that it replaces them. Because we don't want scaffold to be like uh, exactly the same for everyone. We want them to be different depending on the user input. And then it's going to publish to GitHub, to our repository URL, and then it's going to import that to the catalog register it using like, you know, hey, go to this repo and take the catalog info YAML that has the backstage information. So let's go ahead and create this in template YAML. So I'm going to create a skeleton folder that will be essentially what, what's going to go to the repo. And component, this is where you see the Go templates that backstage parses and replaces. Um, catalog info, without that catalog info YAML, you can't register the, uh, like your service to, to backstage. We're gonna have a very simple back package JSON. Why do I keep opening this? Package JSON. And then we've got our, uh, basic, simple, hello world. So one thing to, to, to see here, like, you know, I, I have templates in actual code as well. Like, for example, when I create a repo, I expect this to be replaced with service name and owner, which is like, you know, something that we're gonna use in, in, in crossplane part of the side, of the, part of the code as well. So let's continue, server.js, and I have a typo here as usual. Cool. 
Yeah. Cool. So we've got our first um, backstage. What is it? Okay. We've got our first uh, backstage template. So we're going to hit commit and push. And then we're going to go to backstage and click create. Okay. Okay, cool. So I'm so I'm going to take the URL of that template YAML to import it to backstage. It's it has a really nice integration with GitHub that is able to figure out like you know uh, how to fetch anything from from a GitHub repo, and we imported it and we got it and create and you see hello world on Kubernetes, our own our own. Um, Templates, kubecon, and uh, you see, like, you know, how many times I had to try. So, and move off. And create. So, this is creating our repo with our own, like, you know, hello world code. Um, let's see. Yeah, and as you can see, server JS has like it's replaced with owner and kubecon and a2. So for example, if you have images or like you know GitHub Actions, especially, it's very very it's useful. You would need to change the like image tag and or image uh, repo. Uh, so you you need to have like you know some sort of templating in the scaffolding code as well. Cool. So I'm going to clone this very new. Uh, Repo. Two, uh, was it yarn or npm? It's just, okay. npm start. And let's see. Okay, of course it's not HTTPS. Cool. So I just like, you know, went through like very small cycle, very simple app, like, you know, hey, I'm a developer, I just want a hello world on this specific language, and I created it through templates. So this is like, you know, mostly just, just backstage and, and, and backstage and GitHub magic. So in the next step, we're going to go through like, you know, hey, let's, let's add image and ham chart because we, we want to deploy this to our Kubernetes cluster, right? So we're gonna add, image and chart to our template. So we need a Docker file. Well, let's change the metadata to something new. Um, so that we have like a couple of, uh, actually let's copy this and create a completely new one. Mm. Okay, I, I have the code here. <coughs> hmm. Okay, this is the this is not the template repo. Cool, so I have one template here right now. Even I can see it, but uh, zero to hello world. So I'm just going to copy this into another image chart. So I am adding a Docker file, which is very simple. 
I think Heroku also supports Docker files, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but we have to uh, have it. Docker file for builds, just Alpine and npm install and run it. Very simple one. <coughs> so let's let's build it uh, to make sure everything is tight. Okay. Cool, because we haven't gone through, it hasn't gone through the backstage template. It's just like, you know, prints whatever, whatever is in the skeleton. So the next thing is we're gonna have, an, have a hand chart. Okay. We're going to have a hand chart, but there's a detail here. And I think people who <coughs> work with hand charts a lot will be able to catch it, is that if you, um, okay, in my image chart folder, okay, so I have, uh, I should just use VS Code for creation of everything. Okay, I'm adding to the skeleton a chart folder and it's gonna have its own templates folder and also values file. Values.yaml and also chart.yaml. This is a little bit, ugh. As you see, there, there, there are like, you know, some um, backstage templating here. And I know like, you know, you're gonna realize like, you know, hey, actually that's what, that, that's how uh, Ham does it too. So I can hide it. Cool. And I put that tag here because when I build it, I want it to be the git commit. We're not, we're not doing much, much versioning really. And this is like, you know, how I'm going to deploy my Hello World application, just the service and the deployment. The one thing to notice here is that this, like, you know, notation, <coughs> without this, like, you know, the Helm and Backstage would, like, you know, it would clash essentially. For example, if you, if you don't have it here, then this dot values by Backstage would try to interpret that. And it would fail because there's no, like, you know, image and tag in the user input, right? So you put this row and end row uh, as beginning and end of the parts where you don't want backstage to touch. It just treats it as like, you know, plain text. Um, so service.yaml, cool. We got it. And here, as you can see, like, you know, these two things are going to be replaced by backstage, but this part is going to be overridden by values YAML. And I will add a GitHub action in, in right now to replace this tag with the commit once it builds the image chart. Um, and yeah, and our GitHub actions will essentially be, hey, like, you know, check out repo, Docker build. See, this is, <coughs> for example, this builds like uh, multi-platform images, right? We don't want your developer to deal with that at all, right? So we are able to just take that load from them by having it just in the scaffolder. So, okay. I'm going to create the GitHub action folder. Cool. Oops. in this ci.yaml. Okay, so I think this is, yeah, now we're going to like, you know, create a new commit and push our new image. 
new template actually. And let's go and register it. Keep going templates, image chart, and then template YAML. I'm just going to use this. Import, yeah. So when I go back to the create menu, I have a new uh, software template that I can use. That's what they call them. And I click choose. <coughs> So I create this and repository, and this time it's gonna do a little bit more magic than the than the first one. Cool, it's been created. Let's go and see it. Okay, now we've got the initial commit. It has GitHub workflows, and it started to build the images, like you know, and the and it's going to build hand chart OCI image as well and it, and it will push to github packages to be ready for for consumption and uh, yeah it'll it'll look like just like this um, yeah i mean we can we can deploy the hand chart but i think we're a little bit on time so i'm going to like you know just skip to the next step on where we use these uh, images uh, with Argo CD, but if you want to look at it, how it's going, yeah, it's just building lots of stuff. For example, in this scaffolding in GitHub Action, you can have like all technologies like image scanning and everything, <coughs> so that your developers don't really like you know need to be careful about those, or you don't need to have a wiki page about how to like create a new repo pro project in this language. Cool. So. Packages are pushed. You see, like you know, two packages, and developer didn't even do anything. So we're going to um, create just another template now. Template that is exact copy of the earlier one, but with some changes. Cool. And let's change the name, hello world with GitOps. Cool, so one thing, uh, this is where we add custom action to Backstage. So the extensibility story of Backstage is essentially you make some code changes. And I had to write a, a new like uh, module for, uh, for it to interact with Kubernetes because right now, <laughs> As far as I'm aware, there is no like action to interact with Kubernetes. There's core Kubernetes integration with Backstage that reads uh, files and shows the status if if the labels are right. But there is no nothing like you know, hey, go create a deployment or go create anything and on the cluster. So we I have written this like you know it's it's a very simple, but I don't want to go into details. But this will let us uh, have the custom action that will create an Argo CD application as part of the scaffolding. Uh, and the reason that we did, we don't do this as part of GitHub Actions is that I don't want GitHub repo to have access to my cluster. Because my cluster is kind cluster, it's private, and private clusters are like, you know, everywhere, right? So you don't want to have like, you know, uh, you may not want to have, you may not want to give kubectl config to, to the repo. Um, yeah, so uh, we're going to go back to our um, backstage implementation and add these NPM packages. Um, so I'm going to show you how you can add them. You, you essentially need to register them in the create plugins uh, part of the application. <coughs> cool. And so I'm going to packages and backend. Here you have the source, plugins, and then you got the scaffolder. That's what we are concerned with mostly. And now it, it doesn't do anything. It just uh, creates router with defaults, and I'm going to change it to 
essentially initialize, initialize the built-in actions and add two actions from my package. One is Argo CD create Helm application and the other one is wait for last workflow because we want to create the repo, wait for the action to complete, to push the images and create Argo CD application to pick that up. Cool. So we just added that and let's see if it's all good by running it locally real quick. So there's an endpoint called uh, create where we can go and actually create actions. Cool. So this is like a list of actions that are registered in this backstage instance. <coughs> and when we go to the bottom, yeah, our actions are here. So we're cool. All good. And in addition, our backstage service account needs to have permissions to create these Argo CD applications. It doesn't have them by default. So I'm going to cat. Cool. I just created the permissions, but I'm going to have to like, you know, rebuild and push it to the cluster. Push it to the like load it to the cluster. Cool, so this is like, you know, um, a little bit different than Heroku in the sense that we're going to like, you know, create the repo actions, build, build the image and like Argo CD to pick up. But when we make another change, Argo CD is not going to automatically pick it up because Kubernetes or Argo CD, like as a concept, they work with like an you know, image tags and they don't continuously check whether there's a new image pushed to that image tag. And if we push like, you know, different tag, then like, you know, something has to go tell Argo CD, hey, there is this new version or digest has changed it, right? So there's a small project called Argo CD image updater, but it doesn't quite work with Google, uh, GitHub container registry for some reason. Uh, so we're not gonna have like, you know, hey, I'm, I'm gonna make a change and like, you know, it'll automatically propagate. But it, it, for the first run, it's going to do that. And then later on, I'm going to update the tutorial with, if they fix that problem, essentially. Um, yeah, so uh, we, have, we have to re re rebuild the, like you have to do this rebuilding for templates as well. But as, as I mentioned, we enabled it to be able to like, you know, import that from the UI. Um, Cool. Yeah, and I have to ki kill the backstage pod so that it picks up the new image. Cool. It's gonna come up in a minute. And also, these are like you know uh, two new steps that I have to add to my scaffolding actions. One is GitHub wait, and the other one is Argo CD create. So let's go to template.yaml. Right before registering, I would like it to wait for the workflow to, workflow to complete, and then Argo CD is going to create it. Cool, so I have just pushed my new template. And let me check if Argo CD is up. It is up. This is nice. Port forward. Yeah, so I'm going to because we're using in-memory database, all the existing templates are gone. So I'm going to import the one that we just created from scratch. Yeah, Argo CD1 template YAML, register it and import. Cool. Choose it, move up. So we're just like, you know, going through the same cycle, but like, you know, with, with different uh, setups, like one by one. And create. Okay, this is actually not worked. 
There should be a f two more steps there. Let me check. So let's go to our template and did we not commit? Okay. Okay, I forgot to save, of course. It's, there's no way around it anyway. So I just like you know refresh the the template and yeah it's all here. I am going to have to register it again, but this time the button is going to say refresh. We got that. I'm going to create another one. KubeCon A5. Step and create. Cool. Now we we, we see uh, our actions there. And while it's uh, doing its job, let's go to the next step, crossplane, which is the part I'm, I'm most excited about. And in this part, we're going to first, without templates, as a platform team, we're going to define an API for buckets, right? And it's going to be like, you know, it's going to have only one parameter location, and we're gonna in include its uh, custom resource in our hand chart. And then composition is gonna have like, you know, hey, I want a GCP bucket that is going to be managed by a service account and I will have service account key whose credentials are going to be published in a secret and I'm gonna have like IAM member, key ring, crypto key so that it's encrypted, like lots of this infrastructure so that developer does not have to know that. It depends on our uh, environment. So I'm going to install it this to my cluster, but not to the templates or the Git repo. Um, so let's check the earlier one. Where are we with it? Okay, it's still, uh, yeah, it's still waiting for the GitHub action. Okay, it's, it's completed. So let's look at, okay, it just came into here. Fail to fetch a ton, I know. Hmm. That's weird. Let's see if the package made it here. Okay. Oh, the version is 999 for some reason. Um, well, let's let's move on to the crossplane and we can fix it there for now. But but that's the idea. Like you know, the continuous integration part is kind of like you know end to end complete now. I am just going to like you know, improve the skeleton uh, scaffolding by adding like you know, infrastructure resources. So let's copy this template as well. And you're gonna see like, you know, in the next part of the presentation, uh, Siddhartha is gonna show like way more advanced stuff that is built with this uh, methodology. Cross plane, code. Okay, so I am going to create a YAML for, let's say platform.yaml. This is not going to be interpreted by backstage at all. It's just, I'm going to like, you know, keep CL applied, but it could be like, you can have it in the like single repo, keep going templates uh, repo, but it doesn't have to be. In addition, I'm gonna add my composition. So there's a copy button here that I never use. Cool. So, so as I said, like, you know, I have to apply them like independent of um, any templating or backstage or anything so that environment gets ready. In production, I can use this. In dev, I can use like min IO composition, right? So that, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a, cre hey, this is like dev environment, so you're gonna get to a bucket with container. But in production, I want you to have like, you know, encrypted bucket. As long as the secret and token uh, is the same, like application can talk to both, then like, you know, I can uh, manage my environments as I want to. 
Cool. So this environment is production environment, and I have like you know encrypted and like you know limited um, bucket. So this part is good. Uh, let's change the name of the template uh, to anyone. Not just application with bucket. The rest is pretty much the same, uh, except the, the new steps didn't make it here for some reason. So let me add the new steps. So we're creating like you know Argo CD application targeting this chart that we publish, but the chart had a, a had the wrong version for some reason. So we're going to fix this in GitHub CI. Yeah, there it is. I was trying something and I shouldn't have tried it. Okay. So this is also fixed. We've got the image chart, Argo CD application, our platform is ready. So what we are going to do is to include in our chart, like, you know, hey, I'm a service that I'm, and I'm going to use a bucket. I'm going to need a bucket, right? So bucket.yaml. Um, let's go back to the cross-plane part. Yeah, and this is all my uh, developer needs to know, right? Just a very simple API with a single parameter, even location US. And then they are able to give like, you know, hey, publish your credentials to this specific secret. And what I'm going to do is like, you know, mount this secret to my service so that when the whole thing deploys, first bucket is created and then my application comes up with that credentials and it works with the bucket. So this is like, you know, I didn't have to give GCP credentials. The developer didn't have to know anything. It's similar to like, you know, Heroku's add-ons experience that they just like, you know, uh, use the, they just need to use the environment variable. Um, cool, cool, cool. So our hello world application is going to have to change because like, you know, we need to interact with Google uh, GCP bucket. So this is a very small, so this may be like really bad TypeScript code because I'm not a TypeScript developer and honestly I kind of hate it with the Yarn and NPM, uh, but just bear with me. Okay, so what it does is essentially every 30 seconds, it generates a file, uploads it, and lists, lists the files, uh, all the files from the bucket. So this is going to be our new application in server.js. And we're gonna have a new dependency, which is Google Cloud Storage. Okay, so server.js is okay, and package is ready. Docker file is okay. Yarn lock is there. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think I think we're there. Uh, we don't need to test it in local at the moment. So, yeah, as I said, like you know, we just created this uh, bucket YAML in the chart. Let's make sure it's there. Now my, my service definition, the deployment needs to change. What I do here is that like, you know, hey, take this credential and mount the Google credentials JSON as credits.json and then mount the, its, its address so that the GCP client can, can see it. The, one of the nice things about cross plane composition is that I don't have to know the composition to know the uh, secret like keys it is defined as part of the API. So we don't define only the parameters and fields, but also connection secrets keys that we can use so that we know what to mount and composition is responsible to populate those fields in the, in the connection details. So I'm going to add here. We're gonna mount it. Cool, so that's the like final state of it, okay. Cool, so I'm going to deploy this guy. Mm. 
Okay, that's well, not modules. I don't want this. See, I told you I hate this. So. <laughs> okay. Okay, this is more sane. Let me just check whether we change the metadata of the template. Yes. Even never. Cool. So we just pushed our new template to our repo. We're gonna use it and we're gonna see all coming to fruit in Argo CD UI. Register it, analyze. Cool. Okay, so I think we're getting closer to like you know the like production like platform right now this is like node.js application with bucket and you're gonna have like go application with something else or in case of like you know, for example group of folks have like you know one application and input as like you know hey do you want rds instance do you want bucket it's like a really rich uh ui kubecon na6 Yeah, so while it's doing its job, um, this is like kind of the last step that we show the integration. Next steps for like, you know, like where, where, where you can uh, take this and go, right? It's mostly like you can, for example, you can make different choices like GitOps. In GitOps, most of the people, they have a different repo for deployment, right? So instead of like, you know, Argo CD picking up from the actual code repo, you can have the GitHub Actions to open a PR there, go through some checks, and then it would update the Argo CD application from the repo that is used for deployment, right? So because like, you know, we're just, we just have all these like standardized uh, frameworks and applications on Kubernetes, we can just like, you know, edit all, all parts of the architecture. And you can use Argo CD image updater, which uses like uh, SEMmer updates and everything, which I think is pretty cool project just didn't work for github container registry and you can like you know add more input parameters right we just added bucket but you can add like you know hey bucket but you can you can add like rd assistance and ask for only storage and once they click it creates like you know this most secure rds instance in your vpn or like iam roles and everything and the funny part is like you, know, you don't have to give them the credentials Instead of like, you know, like for example, if you have to do it in Terraform Shell, you have to give them the credentials. But in this case, you, you don't really. And when you make a new change, you just add another YAML to your hand chart. Hey, I, I wanted bucket, but now I need RDS instance. You can just add the database and git push and new release and you got your infrastructure ready for you. So it's all like, you know, it's part of the same uh, pipeline, just application and infrastructure together. Cool, so this one has created our repo. Let's see. We got it, images are pushed. Let's see in Argo CD. Unknown, I think this is trying to fetch the image from GitHub Container Registry and internet is too slow. What do you mean? Hmm. Okay, I think it takes the wrong uh, URL, so I'm going to edit this to fix it. It's probably in our one of the skeletons. I got the URL wrong. Okay, this should be correct now. In my back. Did they just? implemented pull limits or something. Oh. Okay. Huh. Okay, nice. So what we see here, as you can see, lots of things happening, like, right? <coughs> we have our deployment service, but also bucket, bucket claim. 
and it resulted in bucket composite resource out of sync. It's syncing. It's got 20 events. Okay. So it has created first a service account, service account key, crypto key, and key ring. So the reason that these are created before the bucket is that they are required for bucket creation. Like we have to give the key MS key name. So they're going to reconcile and like, you know, get up to speed. Fail to apply. Let me see what's the error here. Container port required value. Um, did we have the container port missing here? Okay, so I should have used the, the one in. Okay, so I'm just going to copy this and fix it in the repo. Edit this file. Commit. I'm going to have to break this first and then have it refetch it. This is really ugly. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to edit this deployment in the cluster to fix the problem. Deploy dash and kubecon na. It's not even able to apply it. So let's delete this and let's sync it maybe. I have gone through the same thing a few times. It should have worked, but. Okay, so I'm going to delete this so that it fetches the new uh, hand chart. Default, automatic. Not git, ham chart, it's gonna be gcr. And a six dash chart, so far. Uh, auto create namespace. Okay. Okay, let's let's create a new template because this one is not actually refresh the template with the fix and create a new repo. Um, yeah, as a uh, as I mentioned, you can follow this tutorial uh, when you get back from the conference. And as the next steps, like I think there are like lots of things that can be improved. We can have different clusters, and your Git repo could have branches like dev, prod, and like you know main, let's say, and then those branches could just like you know push to specific clusters, which is similar to what how Heroku I think they call it pipelines. You've got like dev pipeline, prod pipeline, and other pipelines, whatever you, you want to name them. 
So you can like you know you can get really really, really close to Heroku experience and still have your own like you know say in your network configuration, infrastructure, and everything. So let's go to con NA7. Let's check if our fix made it. It actually didn't make it. Let's see, skeleton acts chart. Okay, so it says container port is required, but it's not there. And I just edit the file, add it by my hand. How can it? I think I added the wrong templates YAML. So I'm just gonna copy it again. Sorry, folks, it's gonna be okay. There you go. Okay, now I got my new uh, deployment with the container port. I'm going to go to templates, cross-plane template YAML, and refresh it. Okay, create the eight one. This is too much. I'm glad GitHub is not asking for money for this. So cool. This time it should work. Meanwhile, we can take a look at uh, the Argo CD. Uh, let's just delete the old ones. Okay, so our repo is created, so we're just going to take a quick peek. Chart, templates, service, and yeah, right, okay, all good. Um, so yeah, this is kind of like you know, roughly it. We're just going to wait for the image and also like in you know, a bucket provisioning to complete. Um, yeah, but I think like you know that is kind of like wrapping up our, our, our tutorial. Um, while we wait for it, do you have, guys have any questions about the architecture or like you know, certain steps or frameworks? Can crossplane import existing infrastructure? Yes, uh, the crossplane resources have a, a notion called external name, which is the way how it identifies a resource in the external API, which is like you know, AWS API, let's say. So if you use like if you create the YAML with external name annotation and give the VPC ID, when you create that, it's going to come up and it's like look, it's going to adopt the resource as if it was the one who created it. Oh yes, it would be possible. And you can do this in scaffolding as well. In composition, you can say, okay, like I'm gonna ask an optional parameter from user if they want to use the existing cluster, right? Or existing RDS instance. And in composition, they can patch that external name with that input parameter from user. So when they create a new application, they can just point to something that, that already exists. Any other questions about these parts? Oh, it's coming up. Okay, I'm just going to edit this. Small fix, I am calm, all good. Okay. Oh, nice, it's all coming up. Pod it, so see, you, you, the, the pod is going to wait for container creating state for a while till the bucket provisioning is completed. And we see here that crypto key events, key ring, key ring is being created. Okay, JSON. I think my credentials might be wrong. 
I have a script, I'm just going to apply this. Okay. So this is gonna take a while. Uh, I'm going to hand over to Siddhartha to show their like you know production environment built like you know with backstage crosspane and Argo CD and like you know a few other tools as well, all integrated together. Um, yeah, you can take over. Work. Cool. We are going to share a little bit how Grupo Boticario implement those tools, use the same ideas to make our developer day-to-day -day easier with removing all the complexity they have to create the CI/CD and the infrastructure and the cloud resource. So first, who is Grupo Boticario? Is Grupo Boticario is a Brazilian beauty company with 44 five years of foundation is not built in, in the cloud. We have 44,000 employees. We have more than 4,000 stores. We have two factories and eight distribution centers. We are a multinational company. We are present in Brazil in another 15 countries, including US. We are the largest network of franchise in the world. And we say that we are very complex ecosystem of beauty, because we go from the industry to the point of sales, to the logistics, to our retails, to the labs, to our omni-channel, and we are a true omni-channel company from the resource and development products to our clients. And we say that we are omni-channel because we have e-commerce, we have physical store, we have door-to-door -door sales, we have our distribution channels, so we are truly multi omnichannel company and a multi-brand. So we have Oboticario, we have a bunch of brands, so that is a very complex ecosystem. And if you want to know more about our company, you can Google it, but how about try our products? You can go to this QR code and have a 15 discount on your first purchase using the Cube 15 code. And our marketing team will be happy. So why you decide to create our internal developer platform? In 2019, we start our digital journey and a lot of say digital transformation. And we can summarize that transformation into four pillars. We, move, we have two huge data centers that we are moving to the cloud. At the same time we are moving to the cloud, we are breaking our monolith applications into microservices. We are even moving how those microservices co integrate, moving from I IBM bus to Kafka, Kafka and IPG. And we are moving from a proprietary stack to more open source language. And because we are moving to the cloud and create a bunch of microservices, we need to give to the developers the autonomy they need. So that's why we start our internal developer portal. And basically the main idea is to make our developers day to day easier. So our internal platform, the, our internal developer platform in Portuguese we call PDDs, the initial in Portuguese. So it's a bunch of tools, templates, utilities, and automation that bring all the infrastructure, architecture, infosec standards to our teams. So developers don't have to worry about. So basically it's a self-software portal that developers just fill some basic information and they have the application, a production grade, and easily, and we're gonna show in a few minutes. So the tool set that we are using is the same as you show in the tutorial. Our entry point is the backstage, and we have our, our templates. So we do the HEPO scaffolding, create the CI CD. We integrate, for the, we integrate with the toolings that we are using, that new relic is sonar, 
and we go to the CD step using Argo CD. And all the infrastructure that we provisioning, we are using cross-plane. And our main provider is AWS. So I have a video if my Wi-Fi not work, but. So basically you already saw the, the backstage interface. So I'm not going to deep in the technical, I would say show basically the developer's workflow. So they want to create a new component. We have a bunch of templates, the golden paths that are all built in. So FastFi, serverless, Kotlin, Django. We have for front-end application as well, and a more generic for Docker and Slack, for example. Let's suppose that I want to create a FastFi application. So here is a, a minimal documentation of that template. So the developers know how that works. And we try to get the minimum information from the developers. They need basically the value stream is just like a business unit. And they put the GitHub from, from the team. So basically they can fill the components. And then we go to the infrastructure part. So we gave them the autonomy to create the replication and create the infrastructure. So they can say, okay, I want to create a database. No, oh, that's not 2002. And again, we try to get as minimal information required. We see, there is no VPC ID, no, no even security group, anything. So they choose the engine type. So uh, let's say I want to say I create a Postgres and the version. And I can even add in more resources. So suppose that I want a S3 bucket. Again, I can put a name. I think that. And Using the same name, I guess. There is some validation. That should work. Yes. So after I select the template and, and choose the risk cloud resource that I need, I can create. And that will take around 10 minutes scaffolding the repository and provisioning the infrastructure. As we don't have that 10 minutes to wait for, I just have another repository already provisioned and created. So for our developers, they go to the backstage catalog and they see all the information for their, their application, the repository, and we go there in a minute, the Argo CD, so they can see the state, the new relic information, the sonar cube, and even the CI steps that we, in your case, we are using GitHub Actions. So if you go to the repository, I don't know if it's too small, we have in the same repository, the infrastructure and the application Helm values basically. So you can see the application information and the infrastructure. Basically we scaffold the infrastructure and we, we populate all the parameters. One thing that our fine ops team is happy because we put all the taggings to, to keep the cost. And we are using GitHub CI to, to do the CI and, and triggers the action in the Argo CD and we can go to the Argo CD and we have the basically Kubernetes resource for the application. And we can see as well the resources, the cloud resources created by Crossplane. So you can see 
That's the RDS. We see the RDS created. And in a few minutes, we have the application up and running and just a basic application that is basically one health check. And we have the resource. So we can see the database created and we integrate the tooling that our developers need, we integrate it. So we go, they don't need to worry about integrate to New Relic, to configuring their logs, to get the credentials for the database, we inject those credentials for them. So that's basically the workflow of our developers. And what are the benefits we are seeing with this approach? So currently we are using our internal platform by our teams, we have uh, 100 AWS accounts managed by this platform. We have more than 100 night applications built in your platform. We have at the moment 13 templates and we have 195 resource. That could be a bucket, a database, a DynamoDB. And what are the benefits? We give the developers the autonomy they need. They don't have to talk to the infrastructure team to ask anyone they can go to the portal and provision whatever they need. We reduce our delivery time. We don't have more Jira tickets between teams. So we get the moment the developer asks for a repository until they have the whole infrastructure provision that takes around seven days. Now we can usually around 10 minutes. We, we can ensure our security and monitoring standard. So we put the image scanning, code scanning, all in the pipeline. We keep in the same repository the product life and the, the infrastructure information in the same repository. And because we are working in the same structure, it's a bunch of standard, we can have the teams collaborating better, so it, it is a pretty nice journey. And basically, that's it. Thank you guys, feel free to reach me if you want to know about what we are doing. We, we'd love to talk to anyone working on platform because it's something new for us. And that's it, thank you. Yeah. Thank you everyone. I'm just gonna show that it finally worked. <laughs> <laughs> I would die if I didn't show it. So with all the yellow screen and everything, I think it's finally come up. Okay. Yeah. Just similar to the Argo CD screens that Siddhartha showed, which were like way more advanced. But here we've got like our application deployment and then bucket. And it pro provisioned like in you know, all this bunch of infrastructure crypto, etc., service accounts. Finally, it publishes its own secret that has the credentials and it's mounted to the pod. And if we go to the pod, I think we're going to be able to get the logs. God damn it. Okay. Actually, we can take a okay, kind cluster is gone. Okay, my cluster is, is busted, but um, yeah, the secret is mounted and pod is running. And yeah, if you have any questions, you can come to here or cross plane booth or upbound booth. Uh, we would happy to uh, take them. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.